Hello Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, we take that science and we apply it to all things gardening and plant care. So if you like the sounds, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below what zone you are in because it helps me engineer my videos better suited to from where my viewers are from. If you are returning, hi, hello, thank you so much for your comments. So many new people are finding the channel and they are thankful for it. And that is not because of me, but that is because of you, because your comments, your likes, no matter how big or small they are, help my channel gain traction and our community grow. So I want to personally thank all of you so much. So today's video, we are out in the great Saskatchewan wilderness, but YouTube is a priority. So I am filming for you at the lake today and I'm going to batch film a bunch of videos. So that's why all these videos are going to have a very lake ambiance behind them. So today's video, we are going to be talking about LED lighting. Now you guys know that Mars Hydro has sponsored me and given me a grow tent and the TS-1000 light. And I am in love with this light. I have tried microgreen so far and I am incredibly impressed with the results and I am not lying about this. So if you guys want to grab that light or the grow tent, then be sure to check out the links in the description and you can grab your own Mars Hydro LED light. I usually give generic recommendations for things, but this light specifically I'm incredibly impressed by and they're blowing my Sunblaster T5s out of the water entirely in regards to performance cost to run everything what i'm going to be doing is i'm doing a indoor taco garden yes a taco garden for hita slash taco garden so i'm going to be doing lettuce peppers cherry tomatoes and a variety of different herbs in my grow tent underneath my ts1000 light and that reason for that is because i'm going to be growing both foliage and flowers and fruit so i'm going to be able to give you the whole spectrum of what this light is capable of. I also think it translates to what a lot of Canadians are looking for in the midst of that horrible word that starts with a W, winter, and tacos in the middle of January sound pretty awesome to me. So this is what we're doing. We're doing a taco garden which is going to have both foliage and then also flowers and fruits. So that is what we're going to try to use with our TS-1000 now. When I was thinking and planning out the whole project and kind of what it's going to look like, what filming I'm going to do for you guys, I thought that a common question that people may ask is, well, how long do you leave your lights on or do you shut your lights off at all if you are using LED or growing indoors? That's not a stupid question. I mean, it's a completely valid question and one that should be answered. So of course we're going to use science to explain this and go through if you should leave the lights on all the time, if you should shut them off, when you should shut them off, from seedling stage all the way to fruits and flowering. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to stay tuned because we are gonna be touching on everything. So as I was doing research for this video, which I always like to do with all my videos, is I like to back up my statements with scientific journals, studies that have been done, articles that have been, writ been written, by professional scientists and peers. And the reason for that is because I want to instill confidence in the information I'm giving you. And I want to kind of back up my theories with the support of science so that you just don't think I'm a crazy person on the internet spewing stuff. <laughs> that makes no sense. So as I was looking for articles to bring to you guys to kind of prove my point or kind of support the foundation of the argument for what I'm going to give, I found an article written by Seeker and the title of the article was literal clickbait to me. It said, plants do math at night and or while they sleep. And I was in love from the moment I saw that pop up on Google and so I clicked in and I thought it was a really interesting article. It was actually done by some by biologists in England at the John Innes Center and what they did is they took plants, they exposed them to 12 hours sunlight, 12 hour darkness and then they adjusted that to only 8 hours of sunlight and the rest of the 24 hour period of darkness. And what they realized is that the plant was able to adjust its metabolism based on the hours of night versus light. 
And the interesting part was, is even though they got less light during the day, they were still able to gain the fuel to get them through the night. So they had a solid store of glucose to get them through, even when they weren't photosynthesizing. We know that photosynthesis yields us glucose, which is sugar or starch. We also know that photosynthesis is a good thing for making energy stores. And if a plant has to predict its metabolism or slow its metabolism down based on the hours of sunlight it gets, would more not mean better? Sort of kind of a little bit. In order to understand the purpose of darkness in the plant and whether or not it's valuable and how much value it has, we need to understand what processes happen when the lights go down, whether that be the sunshine or when we turn our grow lights off at night. Darkness for plants triggers two things. The first thing being respiration, which you've heard me talk about a number of times when it comes to transplant shock or moisture stress. Respiration is a normal process that a plant needs to take on. The reason being is it helps absorb oxygen into the plant, which then is used for photosynthesis the next morning and other metabolic processes that take place. But respiration usually only takes place at night. And there's a reason for that. This glorious sun that's casting a huge shadow on my face as I'm filming with you guys is one of the reasons. Heat and sun causes water loss. When respiration happens, the guard cells open up and they expose the organ called the stomata. Through the stomata, water is lost. If there's heat and sun, a lot of water can be lost very rapidly. But during the evening, this is less likely to happen. That means regulating and metabolism is a lot easier to deal with when the light has gone down. So respiration being the opposite of phot photosynthesis, but still supplying necessary nutrients and elements to the plant at night is a necessary process to the plant's survival. The second thing that plants do in darkness, which is something that people don't often talk about, is they actually transport a lot of their home hormones and they do a lot of their growth at night. So while they're capturing all this energy and taking it all in during the day, once the lights go down, they like to actually grow and the hormone auxin is typically released during this time. Auxin literally stands for new growth. So the auxin is usually used to grow the shoots and the roots, but it also is the glue that holds the leaves, the flowers and the fruits to the actual plant itself. So all the new growth you see usually takes place at night and very rarely takes place during the day. Natural auxin is so important to plant growth that synthetic auxins have been made to be used in propagation or even grafting of stems to different plants. Synthetic auxin obviously is made in a lab, but natural auxin is something that is made in the plant at night. So if we know that it's really important to met metabolic processes such as inspiration, and we know it's really valuable to things like growth and holding on to flowers and fruits, we know that darkness is incredibly important. Now, how much darkness is needed or how long should you leave your lights on or off when it comes to LEDs indoors? And the answer depends on what growth stage your plant is currently at. Seedlings. Seedlings are a really great place to start because it's the beginning of everything. So seedlings do need nighttime, but they also need daylight. Um, not necessarily for the germination because you can germinate plants in the dark. You do need sunlight in order to grow those first true leaves and kind of get the ball rolling with the plant. Is darkness as valuable in the beginning? Not as valuable. It still plays its own role, so you want to provide it. But typically, you can get away with 18 hours of light on. After that point, once it gets up to its second, third, fourth leaves, you might want to back off on how much light you're providing just so that it gives it time to focus on root and shoot development. Once you're at the vegetative growth, you haven't quite gotten to flowering, you're still trying to build up that biomass, trying to get the height or the bushiness out of the plant, you can set your timers to 12 hours on, 12 hours off. It's an ideal time frame and it's kind of the perfect mix especially when you're not expecting to get flowers yet. When it comes to flowerings and fruit, this is a whole other ball game. When you're trying to get a plant to flower, you need to start adjusting the amount of time the plant sees light for. So you ever kind of notice how around the end of June, all the flowers start opening up on your plants in Canada? 
Well, there's a reason for that. And the reason is that the days are getting shorter. Yes, I'm sorry, it is the beginning of July and the days are getting sh shorter. But what that told the plant is once the sun started to set earlier in the day, even if it's just by a few minutes, it triggered a life cycle for the plant. So the plant said, okay, we gotta make flowers. We gotta get these flowers pollinated. We gotta make fruits so we can make seeds so we can live again next year literally how it works so you need to mimic the same thing inside your grow tent with your Mar mars hydro ts1000 how you mimic this is just put it on a timer and slowly reduce the amount of time that your plant is exposed to the sun so if you're going 12 for 12 just start reducing it by half an hour but never get below around that eight hour mark even when your fruits are there, you're still going to want to provide energy in the form of photosynthesis. So again, never go below that eight hours. The nice thing about the TS-1000, it is incredibly inexpensive to run, whether it is the full 18 because you're starting with seedlings or just eight because you have the flowers and fruits. So I hope this guys, this helped you out. If you have this question, do not think it's a dumb question. It is incredibly valid. I used to work in a greenhouse and I always used to think when I was in university and learning this stuff and working in research departments, I thought, well, yeah, just leave the lights on all the time. You just get rapid growth. You'd speed up your experiment, etc., and so forth. But it uh, doesn't always have the intended effect that you're looking for. So with the taco garden that I have inside, I will be running my lights at a now <laughs> um, because I still have the pepper plant. He's still a little bit of a baby. I'm still doing 12 for 12, trying to gain a little bit more height. I'm gonna try to gain a little bit more bushiness, especially with the cherry tomatoes and stuff. So I'm still gonna go 12 for 12 and I'm going to try to elongate my harvest and kind of make the flowering stage happen a little bit later um, than what's happening outdoors. I don't want everything to ripen at the same time. So I'm gonna elongate it a bit but I will keep you guys posted on the progress with that. If you like videos on LED lighting and just kind of growing indoors in general or in small spaces, whether that be an apartment or a basement suite, or somewhere where you don't have access to enormous amounts of room or light, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It helps me understand what direction to put my content into, what you guys are wanting to see and kind of your gardening situation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.